All right, it's once again where I'm going to give my opinion on things. Why? Because, well, it's my show. I kind of have that ability to do so. So here we go. Lou Elizondo, the former head of the ATIP program, former popular guy with the To The Stars Academy, literally called the demigod of UFO Twitter. People literally will bow and pray to old Lou and his fantastic chin hair. Well, there's a big debate in the UFO field, if you haven't heard by now, that Mr. Elizondo has signed a book deal. Why is this even news? People should be excited for this. Yet this news of Elizondo signing a book deal where there was actually a bidding war for his story between publishers is absolutely tearing apart parts of ufology. Why? You have the section that is there saying, good on you, Lou. I'm going to buy this book. This is going to be great. And then you have the other section of ufology saying, this is BS. This is garbage. He shouldn't be writing a book. He doesn't need to profit off of this. Well, let's see. Mr. Elizondo can write a book, and he should. Why? Because we need to hear his story. We need to learn about the man from his own words. So far on almost every podcast and radio show and television interview, he he has this aura of a mystique to him. He says a lot without saying a lot, for the most part. We don't know the man. We don't know where he was born. We don't know a lot of questions about his military career, his background, how he truly got into UFOs. Does he really hate the Two of the Stars Academy and Tom DeLong? Is that the reason why he quit? We need to find out. But here's the other side we forget about Lou. He is human. He has a longtime wife. He's got two children that are grown up. He's got mortgage. He's got bills, just like you and I. Internet costs money. Cable costs money. The NFL channel costs money, even though I don't think he's a sports fan. Outside of lifting weights. Hydro costs money. Electricity costs money. Food costs money. Gas. Insurance. He's got to pay it somehow. We do know that he is a government contractor. What we don't know is he probably lost a ton of money through this whole To the Stars Academy fiasco. How much, we don't know. But I'm sure if you were in his position as well, you'd want to write a book about your story as well, especially if companies are literally up bidding each other to try and get your story. Now, there's a lot of people in ufology that do not like Elizondo for a number of reasons. Number one, he's a government spook. Once a spook, always a spook. Can't trust the spook. How can you trust the spook to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Because his job for a number of years before UFOs became the topic du jour was to keep this all silent. And now he wants to play the good guy, the hero, wants to wear the UFO cape. Now, I've talked to Lou a few times, and I'm going to tell you right now, at first, I didn't care for the guy. I didn't want to trust the guy. Now, I think he's a good dude. I do, on a personal level. Do we know what his intentions truly are? No, we do not. Maybe a book will tell us. But there's this great divide in ufology that for some reason, you're not allowed to make money. You're not allowed to make money off your story because that means you've sold out. The biggest con excuse ever. Oh, that person sold out. This person sold out. Travis Walton sold out for the movie. Lou's selling out for a book. It's hogwash. Everybody's allowed to make money. Everybody's allowed to make money off of something they love. The worst part about it is some of his biggest critics are authors who make money off their books, 
YouTube podcasters who make money off of their channel and their live super chats. But Lou's not allowed to make money off his book. No, 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 that's selling out. Now, there are some people also upset that Lou is holding on to some stories that are apparently going to blow our minds. Of course he is. That would say that he's been talking about doing a book for a long, long time. We need this book. Ufology needs this book because it may give us those little secrets, those little tidbits that we get, those little scraps that mice feed on after a dinner and a barbecue outside. We need those. We need those. Why? Because that's all we get. That's all ufology ever gets. And for people to criticize Lou for telling his story, whatever that story may be, it's ridiculous. I want to learn about the man. I want to learn about his childhood, his military career, how he got involved with the government and the alphabet agencies that led him to the Pentagon. I want to know if he'll come out as an experiencer. Imagine that. Imagine if Lou Elizondo comes out as an experiencer. For so long, we've heard Lou talk UAPs. We don't know where they're from, foreign adversaries, uh, threat narratives. We've heard it all. But what happens if in that book we find out that Lou's got aliens? What happens if in that book he tells us a story of his own encounters, whether it happened during his time at ATIP or whether it happened on his personal time, maybe growing up or later on in life? How would that change the entire perception of Lou Elizondo? Think about that. I've already gone on record saying I believe that Elizondo is an experiencer. You can go back to our first interview about 25 minutes in with him when I ask him if he's seen extraterrestrials. Without saying it, in my opinion, he completely admits that he did and has. So the point that I'm getting at is he's allowed to make money. We are all allowed to make money. I have no problem with people making money, whether it's Grant Cameron and Nicole Sackage on their brand new book, whether it's Richard Dolan, whether it's certain podcasters and YouTubers making money off of talking on this subject. We're allowed. Money and profit are not dirty words, except when it comes to the paranormal umbrella. You're not allowed to charge if you're a paranormal investigator. Otherwise, that's taboo. You're not allowed to make money in ufology because you're pushing a narrative. You're ripping people off. You're lying to people to make the old Benjamin Franklin. I'm sorry, I don't know who's on our $100 bill in Canada. Unfortunately, the world revolves around money. And none of you would ever turn down your job if somebody came from a different company and said, I'll pay you $50,000 more a year, or $20,000, or even $10,000 more a year. Heck, maybe even $5,000 or $2,000. You're not turning it down. Why? Because we're all trying to get ahead in life. We're all trying to survive in this ugly, ugly time right now. And for people to say that Lou should not be able to write a book, it's incredulous and ridiculous. It really is. Absolutely, he should write a book. 
We need his story. We need his words. And if he lost money on the to the Stars Academy, because we still don't know whether he was an investor or not. Maybe some people do. I do not. But if he lost money on that, doesn't he deserve a chance to get his money back? Everybody deserves that. Back in 2017, when I had my breakdown, I lost a lot of money because I couldn't work. Wasn't there. All right. I lost a lot of money. I'm finally getting out of that hole. He's allowed to make money off his story. He's allowed to make money off of his name. So far, as far as we know, to this point, he has done everything for free. Every conference, every interview, he has done for free. Even the television series, they did for free because that was a To the Stars Academy event. So if you look at it, he is given, whether you like him or not, a big piece of his last three years to ufology, going on every podcast that he could since leaving the To The Stars Academy almost a year ago. Now, one of the first things Lou Elizondo told me, and this is where I gained a lot of respect for him, was when he found out that we had put in 15 different requests for interviews with the To The Stars Academy for Lou Elizondo to interview with us here on Spaced Out Radio including one interview where they asked us for preloaded questions, which we declined. He was embarrassed. He apologized a couple of times for that because he wanted to do the interviews. But due to the silly rules that Tom DeLong's team put together on paper and on contract, he had no say in it. So before we continue to beat up and bash old Louie for his role in ufology, let's remember, he is human too. He is allowed to make money. He's allowed to take care of his family. He's allowed to put money away for retirement, even though he's got a pension from the government. He's allowed, just like you are, just like I am. Now, if you don't trust Lou as the voice of ufology, that's okay too. He's allowed to take criticism for his former career and hiding a lot in his former career from the public. Is he the UFO savior? To this date, we don't know. But right now, he's one of the most important people, whether you like him or not, in ufology today. And he's about to write probably a very popular book. And he's allowed to. That's your Dave 101.